Previously on Per Plays Baldur Gate 3, we defeat the Goblin Shaman and also a bunch of underling goblins. And we had a long friendly chat with Shadowheart. You don't have permission to be here. You're about to be ejected. Striking distance. Let's finish this. A tale for the ages.
feet. Speak, they burn. Black ahead. Interlocking circles with moons and stars. This must be the seal mentioned in that journal. Let's investigate, shall we? That's curious.
I felt like I was getting distracted from destroying the goblin's nest, so I decided to go back and finish my mission.
What manner of place is this? A path to redemption? Or a road to damnation? Hard to say, for your journey is just beginning. What would suit the occasion? Hmm. The words to a lullaby, perhaps. The mouse smiled brightly. It outfoxed the cat. Then down came the claw. And that? Love. Was that? <laughs> they do know how to write them in Cormier, don't they? Well met, I am Raphael. Very much at your service. Pleasure. I'm Mr. Per- Charmed, I'm sure, in more ways than one. We should have a chat, you and I, but not here. This quaint little scene is decidedly too middle of nowhere for my tastes. Come. There, middle of somewhere. Nice decor. The house of hope, where the tired come to rest and the famished come to feed lavishly. Go on, partake, enjoy your supper. After all, it might just be your last. What makes you say that? Call it a... Ninth sense. What's better than a devil you don't know? <laughs> a devil you do. Am I a friend? Potentially. An adversary? Conceivably. But a savior? That's for certain. What makes you think I need saving? Come now, why play hard to get when you're in deep over your tadpoled head? One skull, two tenants, and no solution in sight. I could fix it all like that. You're mad if you think I'll make a deal with the devil. Take all the time you need, but make up your mind before you're counting down with tentacles. Try to cure yourself. Shop around. Beg, borrow, and steal. Exhaust every possibility until none are left. And when hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair, that's when you'll come knocking on my door. Hope. <laughs> Such a tease. I'll have the last laugh at the end. <laughs> I've always wondered what a laughing mind flare sounds like. All those pretty little symptoms Sundering skin, dissolving guts, they haven't manifested yet, have they? One might say, you're a paragon of luck. I'll be there when it runs out. Literally. Just when I think I've got a grasp on our dilemma, a devil shows up. <sighs> no matter. We've dealt with every other oddity thrown at us lately. We can handle this one too. Now, as for this Raphael, he knows our secret. He claims he can help. What do you make of him? Honestly, I'm not sure. I suppose it was a lot to take in. A devil sought us out, teased us with his help, but he also stared as if we were the banquet, rather than the one on the table. We can't hedge our bets here. 
Best we decide how to deal with him, if at all. All right, perhaps we shouldn't trust Raphael. He's a devil after all. Good, you got there eventually. He's clever. My order uses the same tactic when dealing with enemies of Shah. You don't need a scourge or a rack to break people. Fear and self-doubt are sufficient. When actual pain comes, the victim's already done the heavy lifting for their torturer. There were no right answers with that devil. He was toying with his food, us. I'm glad I made the right decision then. Perhaps you didn't. See, sowing doubt is an old trick. Watch out for it. And for Raphael. The devil with the silver tongue. An old fairy tale my father read to me. The kind with a hero, a villain, and a moral. A farmer made a deal with the devil. So the story goes. In exchange for the farmer's dearest fruit, the devil granted him a bottomless coin purse. The farmer's dearest fruit, naturally, was no apple nor peach, but his beloved daughter. We can learn a lot from fairy tales. Don't you think? With the right teacher, yes. What are your thoughts on the devil, Will? Refuse him, no matter how tempting the offer. No matter how delicious the feast he lays out for you, the cost's always too great. Don't worry, I have no interest in a devil's deal. That's because you still have hope. But when he becomes your last hope, remember this. He'll require of you only what you're least ready to part with. And then require more still. You might think you'd give up anything for a cure. But the devil won't take just anything. He'll take everything. Do you feel as flattered as I do? Fight it to dine with a devil. <laughs> Devils rarely approach mortals without some nefarious intent. We'd be wise to avoid him. Don't let his bluster fool you. All that talk of desperation merely illustrates his own. I think he wants something from us, badly. And in that knowledge lies our opportunity. But what is it then this devil wants so very badly? Our souls. But I suspect that's but his opening offer. Let me play the devil's advocate. The man is too eager. Do not dismiss his offer out of hand. If there's one quality all the denizens of the hells embody, it's ambition. Quality they share with many humans, come to think of it. And how do you propose we beat the devil at his own game? By figuring out his true intentions. Fact one, there's something very strange and very powerful about our tadpoles. Fact two, a devil offers to take it away. Devils aren't known to aid mortals out of simple kindness. Whatever Raphael wants, we must be the key to getting it, along with our tadpoles. So, we're safe for now. We wait. If I'm right, Raphael will seek us out again, and when he does, there's a mighty bargain to be made. Remember his Cormirian rhyme? Down came the claw. Perhaps we should start growing our nails. Well, this is it. Thanks everybody for watching part 12. Part 13 is under works. Leave a like and subscribe. See you guys later.